Welcome back guys. So in this video we're going to create ordered lists, unordered lists, and even description lists which are not nearly used as much as they used to be but there are some beneficial uses for them. So let's get started. So I'm in my HTML, the same document that we've been in. Uh, for those that didn't watch the previous video, this is what our site looks like right now. In my article section I've created a new section embedded within the article and this is where we're going to put our lists. Now an ordered list starts with the tag OL for ordered list and then we're going to open that up and each list item is going to be an LI for list item. So I can just put one, two, three, and that's pretty much what we need for the HTML portion. Now where it gets interesting is styling our list. So we're going to go up here to our styles. And first in our reset styles section, we're going to add OL, LI. Okay. And then we're going to add a new rule. And we're going to use the selectors OL and UL. And here's where we're going to identify what type of list style type we want, or for example, bullet points. So we're going to put list style type, and we're going to put none. And you're thinking, okay, so she doesn't want any on it. Not so fast. All I'm doing is putting this in the reset style section. This way, whenever I make a list, the default is that there's none for the style, but as we start defining our individual lists, we'll go ahead and put in a different list style type, but this just ensures our default is always none, so we never get any of those generic list items so that there are no surprises. And then down, we're gonna go to our article section in our main content, and we're gonna add a new section above the footer. And first I'm going to just identify it in a comment, which means it doesn't impact the display of the site. It's just so we can find it easier. And then we're going to put in a new selector of article, OL, or ordered list. And here we just want to define a few things. We're going to change the margin. We're going to put 1M space 0.1M, so barely anything, space, and then 2Ms and then we put in our semicolon. Remember, if we use only three values, that means this first value is the top, this second value is the left and right, and the third value is the bottom. And then we're going to put in the font size, and we want our list font size to be a 1.3 amps. And then for the list style type, remember I said that was gonna come back. Here's where we're gonna actually identify the type that we want it to be, and this one, I'm going to go ahead and go with decimal, and you'll see what that looks like. There are other options we can use for the list style type. Decimal will give it a number one, number two, and so on. Decimal leading zero would give it zero one, zero two, and so on. Lower alpha would give it a lowercase a period, and so on. Lower roman would be that i dot, and then two i's dot, and then upper roman would be uppercase I, and so on. So there are multiple options. Use what you feel best suits your site. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and save it and refresh our site and see what that looks like. And there you go. See here at the bottom it says one, two, three. Since we did not identify a text align, the default is still going to be center because we do have a default rule in here in our body to text align center. So unless we tell it otherwise, it's gonna stay centered like that. If we wanted to change it, we can go into our article ordered list selector and add another declaration of text align. And we can put left. And it will move the list over to the left, just literally kissing the side of the browser there, but you get the picture. If we wanted to have an impact on that, we could go back up here to our margins. Right now we have the 0.1. We can change that to a higher value, for example, 2Ms, because again, that impacts left and right. Save that, and then refresh our browser, and we'll see that it moves it over more, so that looks better. So that's an ordered list. Now let's play with an unordered list. I'm gonna go back down to our HTML here, and below our ordered list, I'm just going to put in UL for unordered list. 
and then we're still going to use the li for the list item and here we can put the same one two three and then before we run it we want to go up here to our reset rules and add the unordered list to our reset styles so I'm going to put it here after the P again. I'm trying to keep this alphabetical. It just makes it easier to look something up later. And then remember how before I told you to put the OL comma UL. That's because we styled our order list and unordered list reset values or default at the same time. I thought I'd save us some time. So the list style type by default will be none. But now we're going to go in and actually define what we want it to be for this specific list. So we're going to go down to our main content lists again. And this time we're going to create a new selector of article UL. And then let's go ahead and set the margin. And let's stick with the same margins. 1M, 2Ms, and 2Ms. And then the same font size too. And you're thinking, why not just use the same rule and add UL onto this rule if they're going to be the same. Well watch, they're not going to be exactly the same. 1.3Ms. And lastly, here's where it's going to get different. We're going to put a list style type of disk. Now the other options for this unordered list style types are circle, which would be a hollow circle, disk, which is a circle filled in, like a bullet, square, which is a square bullet, or none. So in this option we're using disk. Could I have put a comma after OL and then put article UL? have it apply the same margin, font size, and then just put what the difference was in a new one? Sure. But if I decide to change my list later on, having them styles all together makes it easy for me to just change this list versus breaking them out later. That's a programmer's choice. It gives you some flexibility, but it just becomes easier to read. And, oh, before I forget, let's go ahead and the text align left so that it goes to the left like our other list. And let's go ahead and save that and refresh it and take a look. And there we go. So now you see what an ordered list looks like versus an unordered list. So, very cool. Now on to description lists. Below our unordered list, I'm gonna go back down to our HTML again, and under our unordered list, I'm going to put a DL. This is a very unique structure. It almost looks like a list embedded within a list. You'll see what I mean. Our first tag before the DL is going to be a DT. The T stands for term. And here I'm going to put email. And then below that, we're going to put a DD tag, which is description. So it's the description of our term. So this would be my email address, just like that. And then we would keep adding items depending on how many terms you're wanting to build. I'm going to build one more. This one is going to be YouTube site. And then another DD, and this would be the site address. I don't have it memorized. <laughs> and that's it. So now let's go ahead and add this to our CSS styles. We're going to go up, to, again, as always, first to the reset styles. And we're going to add the DD, DT, and DLs. And then here where we have our list style type default is none, we're going to go ahead and add DL to that as well. So I'm going to put DL in the front here. And then let's go down to where we have our list styles, main content list. And let's add a rule with the selector of article DL. And here we're going to set the margin 1M and 2Ms. And again, when it's two values, that would just be top, bottom, left, right. And then we're going to add a font size, just like our others, of 1.3 M's. I said M's, and so I put in the S because it sounds like there's an S there, but there's not. <laughs> and then we're going to actually, oh, I forgot the space there. Okay, and then we're going to actually put in a couple more rules here since there's more values to this one. And we're going to apply the styles differently to the different tags. So if we're going to add an article DT for the description term, and this one we're going to make font weight bold. And that's it for that one, nice and simple. And then let's make a rule for, man, I just have a hard time spelling article, don't I? Uh, for our description definition. And this one we're just gonna put a margin left of two Ms. I didn't put the S that time. And this is because we want the definition to be a little bit more to the left than the term. 
Oh, and let's jump back up here. And once again, I do have that default to be centered. So let's do a text align left. Notice we didn't have a list style type here. We could add one. We could even do a list style image instead of type if we do that. So for example, if I did list style image, the URL, and then it would be obviously my images folder, blah, 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 dot gif, in quotes, forgot the quotes there. And that would use an image at the bullet. The important thing to know with the list style image is that we do not control the size of that one. It will need to be a small image. You're not gonna want a really big bullet because it will mess with your line spacing. Make sure you have a nice small image that you can use if you're going to use an image instead of a list style type. So let's save this now that we've applied those styles and take a look and see what it looks like. Let's refresh. And see, that's what a definition looks like. It's a little tight, but see how it applied the bold to the term, and then we have the description indented underneath it. So it provides some nice structure. I'm gonna apply a line height of 1.3 M's, and see if that helps take care of the crowdedness. Yeah, a little bit better. Let's try two, I want it a little bit bigger. There we go, much better. Okay, we added some line height to give it a little bit more spacing so that it's not so crowded. So we covered how to do all three list type, our ordered list, our unordered list, and a description list. In our next video, we're going to build some tables and also create table-like structures with divs. So stay tuned, I will catch you later.